Howdy folks, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be working on my 1987 Toyota 4Runner, the Bebop. It had, it had stuck calipers, this project began with stuck calipers, so this thing's been parked for a little while. I started tearing down the calipers the other day and realized that the soft brake lines right behind them are, you know, cracked and old. So I ordered those up. Um, I got new calipers and the brake lines, which I had to order in. So it took me a couple days to get them, but I got them. And um, as I was kind of looking at the whole situation, um, I was looking at these old rotors. Now, I don't, I don't remember. I have so many of these vehicles. It's been a couple weeks since I've driven this vehicle, but I don't remember them having any sort of vibration issues, um, which would indicate that they're warped. But there is a lip right here at the edge and on the back as well. So, um, you know, that got me thinking if I'm gonna go this far, I might as well swap these out. Plus, it would give me the opportunity to um, check out inside of the hubs and, and the bearings. So, make sure they're all greased up and, and good to go. My locking hubs do work fine. They're not stuck or anything like that. But like I said, if I'm gonna go this far, I might as well, you know, I might as well tear the front end apart a little bit more and, and replace all this stuff. So. I ordered some new ones of these. I got them from Amazon. I got my calipers and my soft lines from my local Napa, just because I've had issues with those before, like seals and stuff like that. So um, that's something that I always buy locally so I can bring them right back in if I need to and not have a whole bunch of downtime. Something like this I'll buy online because as long as it's the right fit, then it's pretty much, pretty much good to go. So that's what I did. Um, I've already done this side. I haven't put the caliper or anything back on them, just a, kind of the hub stuff. But we're going to go ahead and from start to finish we're going to do the other side, the driver's side. This should be the same process for any IFS rig, so it should be like 86 to 95 will be the same. And it's, it's pretty universal as far as most IFS trucks, and including straight axles as well. This is really similar. Other than the straight axles, the, the rotor goes on differently, so this is a little bit more involved. That being said, Let's get started. I'll show you guys how to do this. All right, so these Toyotas are gonna to take a 21 millimeter. I don't know what the standard uh, crossover is, but 21 will work on your big impact. Once you get the wheel off, you've properly jacked it up, take the wheel off and you have an instant seat to sit on. Now, first thing we do is just make sure we don't hear any weird noises in the bearings while it's all put together. This one sounds good. Feels good. Got a little bit of resistance. You can see with one finger I can turn it, but I gotta put a little bit of force into it. It's about what you want. Um, there's proper tools for doing this, but I've never I've never used them. I've never had an issue on dailies, on wheelers. It's all about the feel. You're gonna wanna take a 10 mil. Take these locking hub bolts off. If these are like super rusty or whatever, I might recommend not doing it with a drill. Any of you have worked on enough Toyotas, you know these little 10 mils are easy to break. Now, the thing with this is, once you know what you're doing, these are really easy to work with, um, but sometimes you can put these back on later on and they don't, they don't work anymore. You didn't put them on right. There's a couple different ways to do this wrong, so you're not necessarily gonna break anything, but what I usually do is I just make sure it's in the free position so make sure it goes to lock. Yeah, it wants to bounce out. Go to free, and then you can slide it right out. Just leave it like that. What you're looking for is any sort of water damage, rust, or anything like that inside of this. Um, and also, you wanna make sure it's properly greased. So this has tons of grease on it. The other side was really good too, so I'm happy with that. I'll put that off to the side upwards. You'll switch out to a 12 millimeter. Unless these are aftermarket, in which case they could be 13s or something else as well. What you want to do is spin them off just enough to where you have the nut still on the thread. And then you'll actually want to get it pretty close to flush with the top of that stud. So off the main body a little bit, but flush with the stud. So you're just taking these off just a little bit. I'll show you why. Just like that. Now, in the past what I've done is I've used one of these uh, cold chisels and to get these 
So there's a nut right here, and then there's a flat washer or a locking washer sometimes. And then right behind that is actually what's called a cone washer, and it's a little conical shaped washer that actually goes into here on the hub body in like a little taper. It's like a little triangle almost, I'll show you in a second. And those can be really, really stuck in there. So what I've always done in the past is used one of these cold chisels and kind of just started whacking it from the side, and eventually it'll kind of pop out. But it'll also potentially go flying off into nowhere land and you'll never find it ever again. So one of the reasons why I put that bolt right there is because of that reason. It'll stop it. When it shoots off, it'll hit the back of that bolt and keep it right there, but it'll be loose. So then you can take that off and take the whole assembly out. Um, what that does, I wouldn't recommend this. Um, what this does is it mars up that conical washer, that cone washer really really bad and so although they are reusable technically at that point um they're it's just going to get progressively harder and harder to get them out every time you do this service if you get it all, all marred up and stuff on the side of that so what i've what i've learned recently is that there's a better method for this so throw that out only use it if you need it what you want is a brass drift so i like this big one right here it's like three quarter inch um you can use whatever you got but make sure it's brass so you're not hurting the threads the nut or anything on here and then uh get yourself like a little sledgehammer so and you'll actually just go straight onto the nut onto the threads rather but with it being flush with the nut it's probably gonna hit that too the brass again is softer than any of these materials so it's gonna hurt the brass drift and it's not gonna hurt your threads or your nut or anything like that so you go like this just like that and you can kind of see it pop out so yeah that one's already free this is significantly faster than how I usually do it, so I'm kind of in love with this method. A lot of guys know this already. I just, I guess I thought I knew better for 15 years. That one's free. Damn, like I said, this is so much faster. If you're having a hard time with this method, um, I, I can only imagine that somebody's already been in there before and they are marred up. But uh, or maybe just you live in the Rust Belt or something, and maybe I'm just getting off really lucky here. But they are super tight; you cannot get them out without doing this. But give it a couple whacks and it works. That one popped right out. That one that would have shot across like my whole property if that nut wouldn't have been on there. That one came off fast. There we go. Simple as that. Man, I can't believe that. All right, now we take the nuts off completely. So right behind the nut is your flat washer, and then right behind that is that conical washer. Let's see if you can see this. So that's the cone washer. You can see that it tapers. I figure if you're watching this video, you might not know how, you know how to do this job. So, for those of you that do, sorry, bear with me. Okay, so we're just gonna take all those out. I'm not gonna lose any of them. All well, these just spin off by hand, actually. I will also mention now, before I forget, that I've already removed my calipers and my soft line. Those are just going to be, you're going to want to use pipe wrenches or uh, line wrenches rather, but those should be 10 millimeters for the brake lines. And what I recommend doing is disconnect all those line fittings before you disconnect or unhook the caliper. That way you're not fighting the caliper moving around while you're trying to trying to break it free. Once you get all those done, the soft line goes from up here on this hard line. It comes down and around and it meets another small hard line. And I kind of just let it sit over the spindle assembly. And as long as you don't screw up those threads or round off the heads, that's why you want to use that, that line wrench, then uh, those will be fine. And I kind of keep it in the same orientation right there. So this side will be, it loops around part of the spindle here and it connects to the other side of the soft line. And then this side right here goes directly back into the side of the, or the back end of the caliper. So I just put it right there. So um, I'm sure you guys can figure out how to do that, but there are two 17 millimeter bolts on the back of pretty much all import calipers that I've ever seen, Subarus, Toyotas, etc. And then to get some of these hard lines broken free from like some of the brackets on here, there's one up here and there's one right here where the soft line meets the hard line. There's these little, there's these little clips right here that you can kind of slide out with a 
It's a flathead screwdriver because there's a little lip right here. Hopefully you know what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm gonna set my nuts over here. The washers and all that. Now you'll notice that this hub body doesn't want to come off, but it's nice and loose. That's because if you still have this, this bolt right here, this retaining bolt with this big washer, that screws into the end of the CV axle that comes through here, and it's just that washer is just big enough to hold this back. So it's also a 12 mil. You want to be careful with this one. I've broken these before, putting them back on. Okay. I haven't broken them coming off, but I've broken them going back on. So when you put it back on, I recommend doing it by hand, and it does not need to be more than snug. So just, just snug it up just a little bit. Be really careful of that. I would have never thought that, that would have been a thing, but it is. Then the hub body should just slide right off. You want to look in the back of it, make sure there's no rust or debris, and that it's nice and greased. Just kind of mash it back in there. No big deal. That looks pretty good to me. So what I'll do, I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll lay this on its face so that more greasy side will be not getting contaminated. And I'm putting it on just like a little mat right over here, a piece of cardboard or whatever you got. This side, let's see, we're going to need this rag sooner than later. It's going to start getting dirty or greasy, greasy and dirty. Just put the rag right there for now. Right here, there's a little uh, C-clip. And you will want a pair of these. Now, I'm a big fan of Harbor Freight for hand tools and for a lot of other tools too, but especially hand tools. These are the Icon line from Harbor Freight. They came in a kit. I think there's like six or eight of them in there. I think it was like 70 bucks. Um, these are snap ring pliers, and I highly recommend getting some of these. Uh, these, are, these are noteworthy. Get yourself a set of these. So you'll see the break in the C-clip. Open it up. And of course, it's greasy in here, so it's extra slick. It's really, this is probably my least favorite part, honestly. When I was doing the other side off camera, I was like stressing about making the video. I'm like, I'm going to look like an idiot, but that's okay. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this little uh, flathead screwdriver. Probably didn't need one. need one that's two feet long or whatever, but that's what I found. So what we'll do is uh, we'll start... We'll open up the gap on the C-clip with these snap ring pliers. Get it in there, and if you can get a screwdriver behind it, once it's popped out of its groove, you can kind of hold it out of the groove. I don't know if you can see that, but just this end of it is out of the groove, and then you kind of walk it out of the groove. And you can use these snap ring pliers to kind of hold it with the screwdrivers holding it, and then move down with the screwdriver, pop it out a little more. Once you get it just a little ways, you'll want to go back in and open up that snap ring again and get that other side out of the groove. You, you can break this really easily. All these parts are available aftermarket. You can get OEM Toyota stuff from 22R Performance and LCE Engineering and a bunch of other places. But I try to reuse them, even though some of these parts are not considered reusable. They absolutely are if you're careful. Okay, so now I got a good grip on that. I'm gonna slide it on out and I'm gonna stop right before it pops off. I'm gonna grab it, and at this point, it's out of the groove, so you can slide it off. It's a little difficult, but there's your C-clip right there. You're gonna definitely not wanna lose that. I'm gonna put it right on that hub body that I put upside down. And what I do is, so if I take the first thing off, like let's say, let's say the hub body, I'll put it, when it comes off here, I'll put it straight down like this, and then I'll take the snap ring, I'll take it off, and I'll put it straight down. And I'll take the next part, straight down, straight down, etc. And I'll stack them kind of like, you know, offset of each other. So that, that way I can't, rem I can't forget the orientation that they go back in. And then when you reassemble them, you'll pick them up and turn them just the same, the opposite way that you did before, just like this. So that's how I do this kind of stuff. It's just, uh, it's just a no-brainer. But if you don't know, you can get in a world of trouble pretty quick. Right behind that C-clip is a little washer that's splined. It goes on the CV axle. So again... When I take it off like this, I'll put it down on the ground just like that. And when I say ground, I mean definitely not the ground. Anything with grease on it, you don't want to contaminate. So behind here, you're going to see a bunch of grease. That's unfortunately going to have to kind of be squished over. You can, you know, it's going to get everywhere, but you can try to keep it as clean as possible. There's a big nut right here. There's actually two of them. We'll get to both of them here in a second. But the first one is the next step. And um, 
I want to say that it's like uh, 54 millimeters. I believe that that's correct, but don't quote me on that. But around it, there's a piece behind it. There's actually two nuts. So there's two nuts on it. And in between that nut, there's like a, a special washer, it's like a star washer that I'll show you. Um, but it, one of the tabs is supposed to bend up against this top washer. And then another tab is supposed to bend down against one of the flats on the, on the rear um, nut, rather. So the washer bends up on this nut and then bends down on the other nut. And so you gotta find that in the grease. You gotta just feel all the flats real carefully. And you'll feel like a little thin piece of metal. Yeah, there's mine. I just exposed it a little bit so I could see it. And it's just a real thin little piece of metal, probably 16th inch or so, right at the end of my screwdriver. So you'll see like a flat right there, and then it bends over right there. And right against that flat, you can see a little tang kind of popping up. So basically, I'll just get my screwdriver in there. If you can do it by hand, great. Yeah, I can this time, but if not, you can kind of get it in there and wedge it, wedge it in with one of these bad boys right here. Just a little bit of force. Probably not going to break anything. But if you can get it in between that tab and that flat of the uh, the nut right there, and the axle nut, you can kind of open it up a little bit. Then you will probably have to take the hammer and kind of bang it flat. Just a little bit. Okay, so that's that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a special tool. This, I believe, is called an axle nut socket. And you can look these up, you can find these on Amazon or anywhere, but once again, I believe it's 54 millimeters. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but it's just a regular socket that's for this purpose. And what you wanna do is, just get it right over there. It's gonna get greasy no matter what. You're gonna have some cleanup to do after a job like this. But uh, you'll get it on there, and it's not very tight. So like one hand, uh, that was a little tight, but one hand it'll pop right off. And then once you get that off, go ahead and screw it off by your hand. All right, so again, what I'll do is I'll pull this off like this and I'll set it down just like this over here not on the dirty ground. All right, so at this point, this little star washer thing should, in theory, come right off. I can kind of show you what I'm talking about here. So when I set these tools down that are greasy, making sure they're not touching the ground, of course. So uh, a couple things to denote about this piece right here which is supposedly not a reusable piece, but I always reuse them, is that you can see the tabs coming off of it. Looks like there's five of them. When they come new, all those tabs are flat. But as you can see, this one has been bent over. So this one is the one that actually bends over that back nut that we're about to take off. And the one that I just pressed back down with my screwdriver is this one, and that was popping towards you guys. So it was coming up against the front nut that I just took off. So again, that one's going back, and this one would go up. And they give you a couple different options because wherever that nut ends up being the proper tightness, um, sometimes those flats will be, you know, this little tang will be right on the edge. So you just want to find one that's on any part of the flat. It's not on the edge of the bolt. And then uh, you'll, you'll press that back in. What I'll do is um, I'll take my hammer in a little bit and find a hard surface, and I'll flatten this out as well. So when I push this back on, then I can you know, have a better chance of it lining up on the actual flat. The other thing to note about this, on the inside, you'll see like a little, like, keyway, like a little tab that's coming out that's really small. Um, there's only one of those, and that'll go right on the top. So right on your spindle, the part that we're threading these nuts on and off, there's a little indentation, and that'll slide in only one, one way. It'll slide right there, and that's going to be on the top. So just remember that, and you'll be good. Sometimes this other one's loose by hand, but this one's not so, which is good. You don't want it to be loose by hand. That means somebody did it improperly. So you'll take your deal and you'll twist it right off. Once you loosen it, you can take it out by hand. If this doesn't come out by hand, then these threads are messed up and your spindle is likely not in great shape. All right, so that one's out. I'm gonna put it straight down like that on top of the other ones. 
So the whole assembly should pop off the spindle at this point like this, but be really, really cautious with this part because there's a bearing and also a bearing retaining washer, like a big one, that will fall out and get totally contaminated with dirt. It's a nightmare. So that's your washer. It's just a round big washer, but there is that same indentation on the inside right there. They'll key it onto that same spindle groove that goes on the top, just like that star nut. So that'll come out. And uh, what I usually do for this is just know that that's going to fall out. But with my hands being a little less dirty than the actual dirt on the ground, I'll pull the whole thing out and just kind of cup the whole thing with my hand like this so the bearing doesn't fall out. But you'll see that that bearing will fall right out with that washer. So leave it in there for now. I'll show you what I do. I'm going to pick it up over here and I'm going to put it on the bench over here and I'll, I'll bring you guys with me in a second. Now we're going to switch from that 21 over to a 14, preferably a, a six point socket, not a 12 like I have, but a 12 will work. Pop her on there. I set this um, kind of hub assembly down to where the bearing is going to pop out this way. So you'll take the bearing and put it on a nice clean surface somewhere. Right now we'll use this. New workbench and I'll just kind of place it as cleanly as I can right there and touch it as little as possible then what we're gonna do is flip this guy over because at this point we have to separate the hub from this rotor there's gonna be six bolts back here on the back side and that's what that 14 comes in handy for These are going to be real hard to cut off if you have to, so make sure you do this right the first time. Get this nice and square. Give it a couple goes. And then I'll spin them out by hand so I don't get stuck in my bit. This is a good time to inspect your bearings and stuff as well, so make sure that they're properly greased all the way through the hub, and obviously that they're that they're packed with grease as well. This is a good time also to denote what bearings you have in there. So it looks like these are the factory Japan-made Koyo bearings, or they were replaced with OEM-style bearings, which is great news for me. Um, I'm sure other bearings are fine too. I'm sure Timkins are fine or Nationals or stuff. You know, other other well-known brands of bearings are probably fine, but I'm happy to see that there's coils in here. Those, I believe, are the OEM bearings. So at this point, you're probably going to be rusted together like I am. So what you're going to have to do is, um, well, I'll just show you. Let me get my hammer. Ugh, it's kind of a pain in the ass. So I hold it from that same side like this. Hold it sideways like this, and I just start banging on the actual rotor itself. I'd probably be hitting it um, up against the truck like this, so I, I don't have to hold it up, but it'll shake the camera a whole bunch, so doing it for you guys. Now would be a great time to uh, hit that like button, and maybe subscribe to my channel if you like this kind of stuff. I can kind of start to see the uh, separation right there, so it's starting to come. And then of course it'll land right on your fingers. It feels really good. Love that part. So that's your old rotor. Send it to hell. I'll make your guys' life easy. This is an AC Delco part from Amazon. It looks like the GM part number is 19285747. And that number is going to be 47-3250093. But it's probably that first number. I just put my year making model in Amazon and then made sure there was a review that said, yes, this works for a 1986 pickup, which is close enough to my 87 Forerunner. Now, I've already done this off camera with the other side, but just make sure they're the same width, they're the same circumference size. 
and then the same height and just overall overall they're the same rotor all right so you're going to take this and flip this back around and uh, just goes on reverse order that you took it off so it'll go in kind of like that lined up your holes start them by hand if these uh you know bolts are rusty or anything like that or the threading is corroded go ahead and clean those up on a wire wheel or a bench grinder usually they're going to be fine though in my experience that will do so now that's installed we're going to flip it back around i'm going to try not to get a bunch of dirt in it this time clean off the seal oh yeah you're also going to be looking at your seals too so this is a seal right here just make sure that's still nice and supple and then it's not ripped or broken or torn or whatever mine's in good shape so you're going to take your bearing make sure it's nice and packed it doesn't have any missing pieces and that bearing still has that washer on it too we're just going to kind of pop it back in here Oh, another thing to check too is your race where this bearing rests against make sure that's not scored scored up or anything like that mine looks really good another seal to check is this guy right here so that's a dust shield as well dust seal and it's a little bit bigger than the last one but it's this outer lip right here it should be nice and supple or at least not cracked mine's getting a little bit old it's not in amazing shape but it's not the worst thing ever either and i'll show you another trick too hang on so with uh with mine having good grease on it, nice and clean, looks like pretty fresh. I want to preserve that. Normally what you guys would do is be smearing fresh, you know, like wheel bearing grease on there. But I'm not going to do that because mine's in good shape. But I do want to clean all this gunk out of here. See all this crusty crap? So what I'll do is I'll get what I can out with my hand without touching this greasy spindle to the best of my ability. Get it out of there. You don't want none of that stuff. And it's really built up on this side. Look at this. I mean, it's cake. You should definitely be wearing gloves for this. But I hate wearing gloves, so you can't feel anything. And they rip. I rip them like instantly. Get the majority of it out. I'll take my rag, kind of wrap your spindle gently all the way up to the base. And then you can take you can take whatever you got for wire brush. You can brush it off without worrying about getting that spindle completely filthy with debris. I'm gonna get in into this piece as well. This is the seal. The seal has that rubber the actual sealing surface on the inside, but it's also this metal piece that's bolted down with these what look to be like uh, 12 mil bolts so i'm going to clean all that up but just be careful you're not rubbing up against this actual ceiling surface right here because that is rubber see your brake rotor gets a lot of cooling from these fins right here and wherever else air can kind of get in there so for prolonging the life of this you want to clean this up so that air can flow better and so you don't get a bunch of crap in there you know, obviously i'll take a little can of brake clean saturate the hell out of that sealing surface then I will take a slightly cleaner rag and I'll wipe down that seal surface real good specifically on the inside of it because that whole hub and new rotor assembly when it slides in here it's actually going to go right into that seal and seal up against that and it spins so you want to make sure there's no grit and grime on the inside of that seal. Now that's done, so we're gonna pull this back off, this clean rag that's no longer clean. And we still have 90% of our grease right there, so that's cool. I'll take a little bit of the grease that is on there and I'll kind of just re-smooth it all out, especially on the inside of that seal. Okay, the back side of the assembly, I'm also just gonna go ahead and kind of re-grease with some of the grease that's in there. I'm just gonna get that seal the inside of this seal. I don't know if you can see that, hopefully. A little bit of grease in there. 
because that'll seal up against that little that metal edge that kind of pops out right here. There's a seal here that seals against that. And then this actual hub assembly right here, which you'll also want to give it a little grease, will uh, seal against this outer seal, this bigger one here. All right, so we're going to flip her around, being very, very careful, very careful not to lose that bearing. It's going to pop out the front, this guy right here. I'm going to slide it in as squarely as possible. So now that's that whole bearing and, and uh, washer are hanging on the CV axles, so you don't have to super duper worry about that anymore unless you're on some crazy incline, which you shouldn't be doing this job. I'm gonna pop it out and just make sure you're seating it into that seal in the back. In my experience, this dust shield right here should be either flush with the back of this rotor or just on the inside. It doesn't really go much further than that. Ah, oh, never mind, it does. It'll come out to about half the thickness of this rotor. That's a good tell. Um, and that'll get a little tighter once we get this bearing back together. Speaking of which, we want to do is orient this bearing with that little tab that I was talking about on that washer. That's going to be on the top because that has to go right under that spindle. The bearing doesn't really matter, but that washer does. So that'll go in like that and lift up. You see this wiggles? You want to kind of lift it up and get that bearing seated. It goes in probably half an inch from the top surface of this hub assembly. So that's how I have my stuff set down, just like that. So now this one will go first and it just pops up right like that. Let's screw it on. Sometimes you'll find these nuts that have a bunch of burrs on the outside of all the flats because instead of buying that 54 millimeter, I think, tool, they will knock these loose with a screwdriver and a hammer. They'll just kind of like chisel it till it gets loose and then you can spin it out. And because of that, these get really sharp. I've cut my fingers wide open doing this, so just be careful. My nuts happen to be in good shape here, so I'm going to not have to worry about that, but I've, I've definitely seen them both ways. So, now we got that. Put it on Titan. Crank her down. And start spinning. You want this to be nice and smooth feeling. And again, you want to have some resistance. So you want to be able to turn it with like one finger, but you got to kind of, you know, pull on it a little bit. And when, when you, you know, you pull it off, it's not going to keep spinning. That's actually a little bit loose. You want it a little bit tighter than that. That'll work. That'll do. And now we'll throw it back on there. Just like that. And then um, we're actually gonna throw this nut, this outer nut on first before we bend it back against these. And that's just kind of a locking nut. That was my tool making that snapping noise. This thing's cracked and broken, but it works for this job. Um, and so then we just want to make sure once it's tight that it still has about the same resistance as before. That's perfect. It feels really good. So I'm happy with that. I'll give it another little snug just to make sure. When you spin it like this, you want to keep kind of readjusting it on both nuts. There we go. All right, now we're going to take... Uh, that obnoxiously long screwdriver and our sweet little hammer and we're going to find through all the grease and crap we're going to find where it's flat on that back nut well in any case we'll do the front one first so i know that i can see that there's a tab right there and we can see clearly that there's a flat on this uh, nut so we're going to take your screwdriver and go up against the hub body and bend it forward 
and you can get it to the point where it'll almost go flat but once once you're at a certain angle you're gonna have to get it up here and uh, tap it with something like a hammer and it does mar it up a little bit so probably a better tool to use than this but what you're trying to do is get that tab to go over this flat so that it doesn't get loose over time it's just a locking tab so this one you'll actually push backwards against that back nut and I just take a hammer and a chisel or a screwdriver rather and that's it it's in there wrapped around so you just need the two the one tab coming forward the one tab going back so there's that now we're gonna kind of just push as much of this grease back in this hub as possible now what we're gonna do is take this assembly which I had laid down like that which means that this piece right here will come up and go right on the axle and then we're gonna take our c-clip and I don't believe this matters but sometimes it does so just to make sure I put it in the same orientation that it came off I don't flip it around or anything doesn't really matter how you clock it because it can spin but you can get it on there sometimes if it's kind of really loose you can get it on by hand but it looks like this one's in pretty good shape still so that's actually good news it does mean that i'm gonna have to use a tool though so i kind of just start it with my hand oh get that little piece of crap out of there and that one too what the hell okay um so i just get it started as squarely as possible around the edge get my snap ring pliers and open it up just a little bit as i put force on it you know just to kind of get it going this can go flying, so just be aware of that. Nothing to worry about as long as you have it a good grip on it. Once it's on there, you can actually kind of scoot it back, but it's easier if you loosen it a little bit. Get it as far back as you can. And then this CV axle, this will give you this will give you hell if you don't know. This CV axle actually goes in and out about oh, uh, I don't know. A little more than a sixteenth of an inch or so not quite an eighth of an inch but because of that you're going to run into issues getting this thing this little snap ring to snap in so what i usually do is either just grab it from the back with my right hand here in this case and just kind of push outward pull outward on the cv axle near the boot but not on the boot so you don't rip it and then you can kind of push this back on and it'll snap in another way to do it and this is for your straight axle guys out there you don't have that option of holding the CV axle because it's all enclosed in the axle. So what you'll do is you'll take this 12 millimeter nut, and you'll screw it right back into that axle, just a few threads. And you'll actually pull out with that, which pulls the axle out and reveals that little groove for the clip. And then it'll snap right in there. Make sure you hear it snap. Make sure it's definitely in that groove. Clean out the, the grease if you need to, just to make sure that that's in there. It's not going anywhere. You can even, in this case, pull the CV axle back and it's nice and locked in place. Then this guy will come right back out so you can get the hub body on. The hub body still has all its delicious grease in there. We want all of that grease that we can get. And uh, you'll notice that not only are there six bolts right here, or studs that are coming out, but there's two alignment pins. So you'll want to find those alignment pin holes on your hub body as well, your locking hub body, and you want to clock it accordingly, otherwise you'll have issue. And you might have to kind of twist the CV axle just a little bit, because this is spline, kind of get it to get on that axle. I guess you can do it this way too. Once it goes, it likes to go. So you can get that on there, um, and then what we'll do is, I'll come back in a minute with hopefully some clean bolts because I'm, I'm testing out this uh, ultrasonic cleaner I was talking about. And um, so I'm going to take a little break right now, but when we come back, we'll finish this up. Uh, I have to say I'm not super happy with the results of my ultrasonic cleaner. Although I did just have a simple green and water in there, so maybe there's a better solution. In fact, I'd really appreciate if, uh, if any of you guys have experience with that, what solution you use to remove rust. I've had these in for 40 minutes at like uh, 45 or 50 degrees Celsius, which I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but um, I should, but my, my thing's set up in, in Celsius. But anyway, um, these bolts for the caliper, I actually 
like ground on my bench grinder just so they have really clean threads because those are pretty important and um, all these guys look just as rusty as before so I'm, I'm not impressed I also cleaned up these little clips for my brakes but anyway we're gonna move on those are the little cone washers I'm just gonna throw it all back together um, this guy right here that 12 mil um, I forgot in the last clip to put that on so I just left it loose you could watch me do that it's important to just go very easy on this guy like I was saying like one click plenty make sure you can't get it off with your fingers try your hardest nope not coming off so that's good now of course we reassemble this in reverse order which is going to be cone washer regular washer sometimes also that can be a locking washer in my experience although I think the regular washers are the stock ones and then the nut and then you'll just do that six times per side and we'll take our small Uga Another thing I should have mentioned is there's a gasket that goes right here and right between the hub and the and like the locking hub body. Um, and so I just I let those I let those get greasy. I don't really care. It's just grease in there. It shouldn't ever leak. Never has for me. But you do want to make sure there's gaskets there and that they're not ripped. I just go around. I don't get them too tight. get them snug all right so that's on there now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the face dial piece of our locking hub assembly the actual locking part and this goes in you can kind of see how the splines they're like there's two of them that are close together and then it jumps a big gap and then two that are close big gap jumps etc um, what I usually do is just kind of you can see how it kind of matches up in there um, I think that there's probably a, a super proper way to do this, but this is how it works for me. You just line those up the best you can, get them in there, and it should just slide right in nice and flush. Also, make sure your gasket's there. My gasket's still in really good shape. But you get it in there, and then while you're holding it, make sure you can lock the hub still. It locks, and if you let go, it'll bounce out, but it unlocks. So... That should be good. So we'll go ahead and put these little tens in. And these little tens you want to be real gentle with. They just go snug. And drive them in there easily. Plenty. We'll make sure that we can still lock our hubs. Works fine. So that part's done. Now what we'll do is we will take our last final rag that actually is clean. You'll want a new rag for this one. We'll take a little bit of brake cleaner and you'll want to clean the surface front and back of your rotor. Front's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. The back, however, you'll see that it gets blocked by a lot of that plate, that dust plate behind there, this guy. So. Now this is all obvious, I'm just gonna say it anyway. But spray it from this area right here where the caliper goes in the back and then just spin it around. Give it a good spray. Get as much of that oil off there as possible. Okay, so I'll be right back in the next clip. We're going to go ahead and put the caliper back on and the line back on, and then this job is essentially done. All right, so I have the brake caliper and new pads and new uh, hardware put in. So you guys can see that orientation that it needs to be in. Pads need to go in there. It needs to follow the contour of the rotor, so the shape of the pads is kind of out, you know, rounded. It bumps up on both sides here. 
and then the, the hardware is going to be right here it's actually going to be i guess that is in the bottom whoops i meant to put it on the top where your bleeder screw is that always goes to the top i meant to put this on the top but i don't think it matters this kind of holds it all into place and helps keep tension on the whole assembly as far as i know as far as i know that's why they do that but i think you can run them without the hardware in a pinch i've done it before Not sure where my old I think I left my old brake lines at the store, which is fine. But basically, you always want to look for a little cracking and um, you know any sort of wear issues. But if they're cracking, that means they need to be replaced sooner than later. So I'm going to put the number up towards the top up here. But what you'll want to do is there's like a bracket right here, and there's also a bracket down here behind this dust shield. But we'll show you this bracket. It's just a hole. You gotta you can't slide it in. You can't slide it slide it in sideways. You got to go through it. So when you pop it up. In theory, should give you just enough room to slip that clip in one of these bad boys. And so you can kind of see how it kind of like angles up a little bit. It's got kind of a little lip to it. So that'll go up. That way you can grab that with a screwdriver or pliers later on if you ever need to do it again. And in theory, you should be able to push it on with your hand, which I can, but I'm going to give it a little a little nudge just in case to fully send it in there. Doesn't take much. Then I will come around here. There we go. Okay, so it goes just like this on the inside of this spindle here. And what we'll want to do is we'll want to put the soft line actually through that hole and connect it with another one of those clips first. Like that. Tap it home, just like that. And now we can kind of connect our hard lines. I'm gonna connect that one first, I think, because that one looks harder. I don't know if it's trying to cross thread or if it's just really tight. You might have to bend the line just a tiny bit get a perfectly straight angle at the threads. These can fight you. Big time. It's definitely fighting me this time. If the angle is not perfectly right, it will never try to thread in. I'm trying to screw it into the back of the caliper in case you're wondering. And again, it's probably less important while reinstalling than uninstalling and taking off, but I always use one of these line wrenches so you don't strip these line bolts or whatever they're called. And uh, they're 10 millimeters, or at least they should be, unless they're aftermarket. And I just wanna make sure that they're going in nice and smooth. The reason why I didn't fully clamp this caliper down is so I have a little bit of wiggle room to get that angle right on it. This one seems to be going in beautifully. there. Now I think this one's threading in. Yep. 
Yeah, it really seems like it is. Not much room right here, so you gotta do little, little tugs. Not too tight, just snug. And then you wanna make sure that that hard line isn't rubbing up against like this dust shield right here where it wraps around so you can kind of gently bend it out of the way. It's a hard line so it shouldn't be wiggling. It doesn't when it's installed, but you just wanna make sure it's not absolutely rubbing against it. So I've got a, I've got a millimeter or so clearance right there, so I'm happy with that. That's on there. Um, then I'll just do this back one over here. Now I use a, uh, like a little vacuum cap so I don't lose all my fluid. So that'll start dripping out right there. So now we're in a hurry, right? So we don't want to have to bleed the whole master up there all the way. Obviously I'm going to have to bleed the brakes, but this just helps with the, little, the length of that process. So I think I got it in there. Gently spin it. If you feel any resistance, any real resistance, like if you think it's cross threading, it's probably cross threading. So you just want to make sure not to do that because otherwise you're in for a much bigger job having to redo these hard lines. That's a real pain in the ass. I get to do that on Sticky, my other truck, one of my other trucks. So that's in it, just like that. Get a little snug. And that's good. Make sure that soft line's not touching anything. I like having the number right there so I can see the part number if I ever need to. Although these are really easy to find. You can just get them at any auto house or whatever and just tell them what year make and model you got and they'll, they'll hook you up. Now, before I forget, I gotta find my wrench. When I take these off, the calipers, they're 17 millimeter. And I use a like the box end of a regular 17 millimeter wrench to loosen them because you have to hit it with a hammer often, more often than not. And then once that's loose, then you can kind of ratchet it off with a ratcheting box end. Um, that's kind of my trick there. Saves a tiny bit of time, not much. those nice and tight. And that's it. Anyway, that's it guys. Um, you go ahead and, uh, you know, put your wheel back on. You guys hopefully know how to do that. I have to go do finish up the other side of this. I'm gonna do that off camera, but um, I appreciate you guys watching. Yeah, so that's it guys. Um, it's not too hard, it just takes a little bit of time. You gotta have the right tools. There's a, couple, there's a couple little things in there that you're definitely gonna wanna have the right tools for, like those line wrenches, um, you know, the brass drift for the cone washers, and um, you know, just have grease on hand just in case you don't, you don't look out like me and have a lot of good grease to, to reuse in there. And um, you know, you might end up having to replace your bearings as well, which is definitely more steps. We can cover that in another video when I have to replace my bearings because you have to punch the races out. And it's kind of a pain in the ass, so I'm not gonna do that today. But, um, you know, that's, that's pretty much it. If you're just looking to do the calipers um, or the, the rotors or just inspect your hub assembly, now you know how to do it. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I'll see you guys on the next video. And, you know, keep on wrenching, man. Have a good day. Peace.